Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halen RV of Coldwater, Michigan with one of our kind of monthly-ish Halen RV flash sales. Although, I think I'm going to call this one a flush sale because I think what we're doing is flushing our very last 2019 fifth wheel out of our inventory. So, <clears throat> what? Anyway, we have one 2019 fifth wheel left in our inventory. It's just time for it to go. Um, so, Boss is putting just a straight, dirty cutthroat price tag on this thing. $68,000 plus taxes and tags takes it home. No dicker, no dealing, no hidden fees, no nothing. Just straight, come get it if that works for you. Obviously, we do, you know, pieces, parts, financing, all that stuff. We can take care of you. And again, we never do hidden dealer fees here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. So that $68,000 includes... Like, there's no extra prep fees or anything on top of that. That includes getting it here, getting it clean, multiple multiple layers of quality inspections. Um, uh, it'll include, you know, dual batteries, full propane, electric and water surge protectors. All the stuff we always do on any new RV, we show you how it works. Uh, we clean it, if I didn't say that anyway. But you get the whole shebang. Just, you're getting the last 2019 that we happen to have. So... If that sounds good to you, it's kind of like kind of like a clearance rack at a clothing store, if you think about it, you know. The fall fashions have to leave because the spring lines are rolling in. That's kind of what we're looking at here. So um, I could sit here and I could tell you all about it, but we've already done that one. So if you're curious to learn more about this RV, stay tuned. We're going to uh, run our full RV video tour of this model for you. And if it sounds like it's one that works at any time, give our team a call or drop us a line on our contact forms. We'd be happy to assist you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and stay tuned, everyone. Fourteen thousand seven hundred thirty pounds. The new Fusion Four Ten here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. If you've seen something like the Montana Three Eighty TH, a front living room with an elevated rear bedroom and mini garage toy hauler below, this is effectively that on steroids. It's wide body, which allows for more living space. It allows for a 70 by 80 king bed that a standard eight foot body really can't. Triple air conditioner, standard generator. Uh, I mean, this does all of the things that the other ones wish they could do, and it does them all standard, which is pretty impressive. Now, one of the main questions anytime the word toy hauler comes into the conversation is what can I put in it? Now, this is a power up-down bed lift. This is effectively, like I said, the 380TH Montana High Country Toy Hauler on steroids, but they have very similar uh, measurements and arrangements back here. I was coming up with about 9.3 or 9.4 long on the floor. Now, understand, if you got something 10-foot like a kayak, you can go corner to corner with that, and you'll be just fine. Now, in the lower section here where there is no power bed lift, I was coming up with a, a solid 60 inches wide, and you'll lose about three inches on both sides in the power lift area to 54 inches wide. So that should give you all the measurements that you need uh, to you know, have an idea of what you have, what can fit in there. And see, the cool thing here is there's a lot of different uses for this. It's perfect size for like one motorcycle. And what's also neat is even if you go down the road with the bed in the down position with a bike loaded, the fact is with that power bed lift, you can actually like get off the bike and stand up without being hunched over and clocking your head on the roof in there. Um, or the ceiling as it were, because obviously the roof would be outside, regardless. Um, you know, it's good for like a quad, it's good for a bike, it's good for um, a golf cart, which is uh, something where the ones without the power lift may struggle on a lot of smaller golf carts, you know. This one won't have that issue. So it's a little more flexible, it can do a few different things. You've also got a half dozen D-ring tie-downs in there, each rated for 2,500 pounds on their own. Um, and it does have an industrial garage flooring in there, so it's very easy to keep clean. On the right-hand side, you can see that there are air vents to exhaust any sort of fumes. Um, there's power outlets inside, uh, you know, in case you got to run tools or anything. I know some people that will use something like this as more of a lawnmower shed in a way, or maybe a place to store their grill because the seasonal sites in which they camp are kind of like a lakeside association. And like, you can't have a shed, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well. Now I have a shed built right into my camper. Now what you got there, Camp Master Flash? A quick look in the down position. Uh, a lot of times when people see these types of rigs in the down position here in the uh, miniature garage area, they say, well, I mean, how tall is that? Can my, can my motorcycle or golf cart or whatever ride down there? Remember that going down the road, the, this is usually in the up position. The down position is here, mostly is cargo space after you get to your destination and unload whatever it is you have in here. Now, 
there are actually neat alternative purposes for concepts like this. There are some seasonal type places or just some parks that won't allow you to have like a shed on your property. So this could very easily become something of like your own garden shed to give you uh, plenty of on-site camp space here. Also plenty big to be able to store something like a picnic table set that you're not using because you're away from the campsite. Like I said, this is a very, very flexible design. You don't have to be an owner of a motorcycle or a golf cart or kayaks or whatever to find a lot of redeeming value in this Fusion right here. And here's one of the things that's very interesting about this one. Because it doesn't follow the traditional rules, if you will, of a uh, fifth wheel toy hauler, and it has more of a living arrangement first and a toy hauler feel second. You know, it's a luxury fifth wheel that just happens to have a mini garage as opposed to a garage that has a living area on the front of it. It's, it, it comes at the same goal from the opposite end of the spectrum. It's extremely travel functional. Not many fifth wheel toy haulers have the ability to get in here and access pretty much all of the kitchen cabinetry. And they specifically laid it out for this to be the case. You know, you've got your full 18 cubic foot fridge here, that uh, convection microwave, all of this amazing countertop space and cabinetry area, all accessible in transit. You can get in here, you can, uh, you know, sit down, you can have a meal. Quick little note, we'll circle back later, but note how there's no carpet here in this like kitchen dining area, even within the slide. You can even get up to the bedroom, you can see, and get to the bathroom back there and access everything there as well. So that's just a, a very uncommon, but very cool aspect of this. And if we take note, if I come around the corner here, you notice that if for some reason you just want to get up here and toss a couple bags or something to ride on the sofas or maybe between the slide outs and transit, you can easily do that as well. Like I said, it's a very uncommon travel friendly fifth wheel toy hauler. And pardon my frosty breath this morning. It's cold, man. Now most toy haulers in the garage area, they're going to have a power queen bed lift with uh, you know dual rollover sofas below that can meet in the middle and kind of form a single mega bed. Well, that allows it to easily sleep six people in a, mo in, you know, a traditional toy hauler. But this is not a traditional toy hauler. This is a very atypical toy hauler. However, it has a very typical front living room arrangement, at least that which you'd find in any good front living room, with these dual hide-to-bed sleeper sofas in front of that theater seat right there. So if you are looking for a couple's arrangement, but you need room to sleep six, you can do that very simply and easily here. And one of the cool things is a front living room organically has very good definition of rooms. Like you can see that's the living room. I'm standing in the kitchen currently. It's not just sort of a mishmash one room. By simple virtue of the fact that this is elevated and there is a sort of pseudo privacy wall right here in front of it, it does leave the people up front a fair amount of privacy. So even if you have adult guests, it never feels like anyone's just crashing on your sofa in your basement at your house, you know? But chances are, most of the time, this is how you're going to have the arrangement set right here. You've got the very conversationally situated sofas, uh, you know, diametrically opposed from one another, and it's very inward facing. And that's the thing, whether it's the theater seat on the bottom left of the frame, on the left of the frame, that high to bed that we already saw, or the opposing sofa, you've got very inward focused seating. Now, this is primarily focused on couples use and guests are a secondary thing, even though I focus on guests a lot so far. We're going to zero in on the primary purpose. And that is you two watching this right now. When you are sitting at the theater sofa where I'm basically standing currently with the camera, even though I'm physically standing in the kitchen and just holding the camera up, this is what you're going to see. You've got the uh, um, you know TV up here with the DVD, Bluetooth, stereo below. Uh, Bluetooth soundbar below that, and electric space heating fireplace below that. So this thing always has a, uh, a great entertainment and that bonus heating from the electric fireplace without burning up your propane. Now you notice how all of those windows are going to open for airflow. Um, you know, you can get some great, great breezes through here. Uh, I also like the fact that on both sides of the, uh, the theater seating right here, you also have cross breeze windows, and we haven't seen the other one yet. We'll get to that when we pan around, but first... Want to look down here? We've got our uh, dual wall hugging, you know, cinema seating recliner set up here. It has heat and massage like most things do. There is a LED light under it for accent lighting. 
It also comes with a pair of these easily removable swivel side stands, which is perfect for a guy like me, because I always forget something. It's nice for me to have a place to like set down my dinner plate so I can go get up and get the fork that I need to actually eat my dinner. I mean, I do that chronically. It's hilarious. So here's that extra tall door side breeze window that I mentioned just a second ago. Now, another thing I want to point out while we're up here is the air conditioning system. Like all fusions, this has a triple simultaneous use air conditioning system. You have dual ducted air with a third sort of drop in air. And the reason that they do that is because that's how most fusions are set up. So you've got the front living room air conditioner and the rear bedroom air conditioner share the same centralized ductwork. Then you have a third air conditioner in the kitchen that is localized basically strictly for the living area. And there's a lot of reasons why they did it exactly that way. When you are on 50 amp service or running the 5500 Onan generator that's standard on a Fusion, you can use all three air conditioners simultaneously without issue. If you are only on 30 amp service though, you can still use two of those air conditioners. Say you don't want to run the uh, um, generator the entire time and you only got a 30 amp campsite. These air conditioners are basically effectively custom designed to be able to run on less power. So you can run two airs on a 30 amp circuit here so you can run the bedroom and the living room air conditioners that are fully centralized and basically experience near full function of your RV's cooling system. Or if you fire up the generator and have full power, you can kick in the third air conditioner here in the kitchen where you have the largest concentration of open cubic foot of space that needs cooling. So this is where they put the third air for that overpoweringly great uh, say bonus cooling effect if you will now over here we've got an 18 cubic foot gas electric travelers fridge this thing is uh, you know especially with the generator it's very off-grid capable we've got you know solar prep and all kinds of different things going around this thing but this refrigerator here right here it's made for more than just park use it's not a residential fridge it's still just as big at 18 cubic feet but it's made for shock rated use like an RV might experience going down the road or especially if you go off the beaten path a little bit. We've got a convection microwave over here, but really I want to start opening everything up because one of the things, God, there's a lot of things, but one of the many things I guess I should say this RV does very well is just an immensely uh, spacious functional kitchen arrangement. They've killed it here. So it starts up top. This is all hidden hinge cabinetry, um, pocket screwed styles. We've got hardwood cabinet door frames, and these are big, deep, functional cabinets. But what I like here is everything is very intelligently placed. It's very campsite cook oriented. They, you know, for uh, a brand that doesn't traditionally build a primarily front living, like you know, living first toy hauler second floor plan, they pretty much nailed it right from the get go. Also, look at the detail here of the entire full kitchen wall wraparound backsplash. Not just around the cooking area, but the entirety. If there's kitchen countertop, it has a max height, like full height backsplash. It also has easy reach appliance outlets right above that solid surface countertop. Because appliances just keep, you know, coming with shorter and shorter and shorter cords. Now, over here is your, kind of like your master control center. And uh, this would be your in-command system right above your tank heater controls. Uh, you can passcode this thing. It can hook to your phone. Anything you can do on this pad, you can do on your phone. So if you want to operate the generator, the awnings, the slides, the lights, you want to raise and lower the front hitch, you want to control your heating and cooling, you can do all of it. Your water pump, your water heater, any major system, you can operate remotely from your phone. So if you're sitting in that theater seat, or if you're laying in bed, and you feel too hot or too cold, you can grab your phone, you can adjust your heating and cooling and stay comfortable. You can walk outside and you can line of sight those slide outs as they open or close or your awning to make sure it's not going to crush anything. It's a very, very cool system. We'll talk a little bit more about it outside. Also, they were not shy about drawers in this thing. They made sure you got drawers from the counters to the floors here. We also have a couple nice spaces for a wastebasket, and they even include one for you, and that's the uh, owner's pack with all those manuals included right there. We also have the Barley Popinator 9000 edition right here, just in case you have something where, uh, you know, you do need to pop the top off, or not everybody drinks twist-offs. 
you know, I'm talking about bottles of water, of course. I don't know what you're talking about. It just happens to be barley water. Anyway, moving on. We already talked about the refrigerator. Um, you've got a nice little, I call it coffee bar here. And that's another nice touch I was not expecting in something from a brand that traditionally builds toy haulers. You know, garages focused, not, not living room focused, but... They really, they nailed it. You know, even up here where you have the Max Air Power Vent Fan to get that extra airflow when you are cooking up a storm in the kitchen, you got it. But over here, your, uh, all of your coffee stuff, if, if you're a coffee drinker, I mean, obviously it's useful for more than just coffee, but you got a perfect space over here. If you have a big coffee maker like a Keurig or something like that, perfect spot for it with those appliance outlets. And uh, some people like the little you know, flavor enhancing, mix in, add in things that you can put in these. Now you're going to see a pair of chairs on the floor here. We'll see their purpose in just a second. I'm pretty sure intelligent folks like you though, if you're looking at a fusion, you can probably figure out why there's a couple chairs there. But before we get to that, I want to look at this. This is awesome. And this is another one of those things that makes this like very full timer friendly. We've got this huge, like basically walk-in pantry. What I like is how they didn't extend the cabinets or the shelves all the way to the side. So if you wanted to put like a couple broom hangers, you can still hang and use some tall stuff here, but obviously we can be very washer dryer friendly, whether you're looking for a stackable or a combo, you can have all those here. And frankly, it's big enough, you could probably still have a fair measure of pantry space in addition to all of that. Now you've got just max size windows all over the place. You can see starting in the bedroom way back there, in the hallway they put a big window. All of them have roll down night shades and it gives you supreme visibility of your campsite. This thing has more glass on the campsite of the camper than I, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to find another model that puts this many windows on the door side of the RV, from the bedroom all the way up to the front seating sofa area there in the living room. You've got windows galore. This is a full window, not just a, a, a shaded thing, but uh, you, you, know, you can shade that off as well. Now, this is where I said those other couple bonus chairs are going to go into, but I do want to point out the fact that you notice no carpet. This is a completely carpetless dining area. And you're thinking, yeah, but this thing is, it's, it's too shallow for me to put four chairs. You don't have to worry about it. The chairs are, are set up so that the chairs go on the main deck, uh, you know, the, the folding guest chairs go on the main deck while your two main chairs stay within the slide. And if I channel my inner Ron Popeil food processor guy, I would say, there you go, just like so. You know, you just pull out a couple extra, and see the thing is your guest chairs, they're pretty nice. They're hardwood, but they're lightweight, they're strong, they're rugged. You can leave them behind. If you plan on purely couples camping, you're like, I don't care about the height of beds. I don't care about the extending table. I want room for me and, and my significant other, and that is it. No problem. Just leave those two chairs at home. They really don't take up a lot of space. They're just there when you need them, gone when you don't. Now, over here in the steps, you have a uh, built-in central vac system. So, kind of like, again, like a Montana luxury fifth wheel. We are just very, uh, you know, full-time capable, easy of staying, uh, you know, clean for everybody. Very simple in that regard. Now, we've got a split bath here with a north-south bed. And again, in a non-wide-body camper, it would present some problems because, once again, remember, this is a 70 by 80 king bed, not a 60 by 80 queen, as is the case with most of the front living rear bedroom mini garage toy haulers. I don't I don't know if there's a specific classification for them. I just know that there's a lot of different descriptors that go into this thing. But here's the thing. This is a normal bedroom and bathroom arrangement within the Fusion family. It, this concept fit the Fusion brand so well, it's not even funny. Normally, you'd find this bedroom and bathroom facing forward in the front of the camper, but the fact is, it's doing just fine right here. So we've got a stone cast sink in the bathroom. Like people look at this and a lot of times if they don't see stainless, they just assume it's cheap plastic. That's not the case. You can do what I call the wedding ring tap test or whatever, tap in there and you're gonna hear it's got like a stone coated shell on it. It's rated for up to 500 degrees. It's pretty awesome. And the way that they have this arranged with the cutaway countertop right there, it leaves plenty of room, plenty of leg room for the toilet and plenty of room to walk in and out of that shower. Now notice that they didn't go like ridiculous five foot long on the shower. It's enough. And it's still got the same one piece self-reinforced fiberglass enclosure here, like you find in almost any Fusion. It still has the corner seat for bathing. Um, it still has the adjustable height shower head, you know, like a, a full blown Fusion. That's the cool thing here, guys. There's really not a whole lot new going on here other than the fact that this one has more living room and more living space and kitchen area than pretty much any other Fusion ever dreamed of because this bathroom here with the dual entry doors, the uh, you know the linen cabinet, the laundry hamper, this is 
Fusion 101. This is everyday happenstance for them. They didn't have to like reinvent the wheel and re-engineer this. Although again, without the wide body nature of this floor plan, you wouldn't be able to have that bathroom or the king bed up here in this bedroom. Otherwise, you'd pretty much be, you know, you'd have to climb over one another to get to the bathroom at night. Now, I wanted to specifically start with the bed in the up position so that you can see that it, there is a point where it stops so that, you know, you can't put something up there. It can't crush the uh, lift system that's down here, it does have a uh, like a pressure sensor effectively, it, to put it in simple terms, but it will amp out if there's too much resistance and you can't punch something up through the roof. It'll hit a truss, it'll get too much resistance and it'll stop. So that, you know, it's, it's <laughs> as my wife would say, husband proof. I'm not sure exactly what she means by that. <laughs> Most of the time, I think this is how you're going to see the bedroom back here. And this is what's kind of cool about this. And really, it's one of, well, several defining qualities on the Fusion 410 versus things like its sister, the Montana 380TH that we also have here at Halet RV. Being a wide body rig, it gave them the opportunity to have a king-sized north-south bed, which is... If you pay attention to the Fusion lineup, that's actually pretty standard practice for these fellas. Uh, I guess, and ladies, pardon me, but they, they know what they're doing. And they know that in a big rig like this, and frankly, at this price point, you are really expecting at least the ability to have a king bed. So Fusion is providing that here. Now, a neat little, you know, facet of that is you can see how you have the, uh, you know, easy walk-around space here and the dual bedside stands, but... This concept also creates a really handy headboard that is very often not found in the RV industry. So if you want a space to be able to like, uh, you know, set down a, uh, a phone charger, an alarm clock, have a little personal fan, or even plug in a heated blanket next to you, you've got the perfect place to be able to do those things. This is another thing that Fusion is really good at just from pure experience. Uh, multiple Fusion uh, RVs have a north-south king bed with an extra-large extended closet and dresser slide over here. So you can see that you have good shelf space, great hanging storage for everything, but they didn't stop there. The slide actually goes down to nearly the floor, which allows them to add this extra dresser space here, and that is the difference between uh, a manufacturer... Oops, someone's playing with some slide buttons on me. Apparently, I didn't lock the door behind me. But uh, that is the difference between a manufacturer who, you know, is really building an RV to be used versus one who's building an RV just to be sold. There's also... You might notice full overhead cabinet storage above the bed, above those headboards and side stands. Also, one of the things I really enjoy in this floor plan is this huge, like, good morning, welcome to the world sort of uh, viewing window, big picture window that we have up here in our bedroom. And there's actually two breeze-through panes on this. Both of those bottom sections will open for airflow. And it does, of course, have the, the nice roll-down blackout shades. And you notice how they're even including the side uh, valances there so that you don't have that extra light that always somehow manages to sneak through the window and stab you directly in the eyes. Am I right? Also, things like a bedroom TV are going to be a matter of standard happenstance in a Keystone Fusion. They just, again, compared to an Impact, which is all thriller, no filler, this is this is beyond what you need, and this is everything you want and desire. Plus, their wide body design, like I mentioned, does make it easy to get in and out of that bathroom from both sides of that sort of center partition. So it doesn't matter what side of the bed you're on, it's easy to get through here. There's so much to cover out here, I'm not even sure where to really begin, so I'm just gonna start firing stuff off. Um, one of the things that'll give a lot of people a little bit of a hiccup when it comes to a model like this, because you've got that Kitchen dinette slides sticking right out the middle of the door side and people are like, yeah, but that eats up a lot of my awning space. And you can see, you know, the, the right hand side of the main patio awning is really occupied for the entry area with those beautiful four step more ride steps and the adjustable foot pegs on those. The center area is occupied by the, uh, the slide itself as well as a face mounted outdoor entertainment center that we'll see as we walk around. And then, you know, you're kind of left with not a whole lot of picnic table room behind it. But if you look even further back, Above those two cargo doors that are open, you see that there's a second power awning there. So this thing has plenty of patio space, but what I like is your primary patio space is very privatized. It's on the back of the RV. It's not near the foot traffic of the, the campsites, kind of like where I'm at now if you're in a park. 
Now the 5500 owning generator is standard on a Fusion. It gives you the ability to do anything and everything you want with this RV pretty much any time. Remember this is a wide body uh, RV, but it also has a wide body chassis for structural integrity and stability. Easy way to determine that is if you look at the, the, the front legs there on the six point hydraulic auto leveling system, you can see how they're very close to the exterior of the body. This thing will be like on a, it'll feel like it's on a concrete pad, like a slab when you get to your campsite and put that thing down. They do an amazing job. Neat thing on anything made by the Fusion family, which includes any of the Impacts or any of the Montanas, is those are the two effectively premier brands from the Keystone family. And the uh, sidewalls and all the window cuts and everything, they are not hand routed out. Now, Keystone does an amazing job of that. You look at their passports, their Cougars, they do a fine, fine job. But they took it to the next level on the Fusion and Montana families by having CNC precise machine cut uh, uh, walls and windows effectively. Now, your side windows are going to be frameless. It gives it that sleek look. Um, you've got a very glossy exterior. This does have a, uh, a oh, I should pay attention where I'm pointing with the camera, um, a uh, 0 to 100 degree rated uh, living cabin package on this. Now, usually with a toy hauler, the garage area can't maintain the same um, cabin temp as everything else. It's usually not an issue though, because your plumbing lines and everything are enclosed under the main body of the RV. But with this having a larger living area, it'll actually maintain temp more easily, effectively. You got your full uh, command station here with very simple, easy to read diagrams. So if you need to know if you're winterizing or doing a dry camp fill or whatever the situation is, if you can, if you can determine the difference between red, white, and blue, which even my daughter can do that, you can operate this thing. It's very, very simple. Now you've got your battery disconnect. This is a full outside shower here. And then the key TV thing. If you're not familiar with that, long story short, that's a proprietary thing from Keystone. They spent a couple years developing. This no longer requires like an antenna signal booster or anything like that. Basically, guys, the, the system is smart enough to detect what you're trying to watch on your TV, and it will adjust the signal being routed to the TV accordingly. Um, so you just sit there. Just watch TV. You don't have to get up a monkey with nothing. Um, in their Fusion toy haulers, you do have Goodyear Endurance radials here, rated for 80 mile an hour. I'm sorry, 87 miles an hour at 80 psi. That's an awesome, awesome thing. Very reminiscent of the uh, Jayco toy haulers that we also feature here at Halid RV, with a very similar Moride CRE 3000 suspension system. So, uh, you know, a couple of pretty high level brands doing a lot of the same things has to pretty much indicate that because there's a cheaper way to do it, but they're not doing that. They're doing this route, which pretty much indicates it's got to be one of the best ways to go about it. Now, below the bathroom area, you've got this extra big pass-through because you have a very limited front pass-through compartment with this being a front living room. Well, no sweat, guys. You, you need more cargo space in addition to the garage? You got it. And then in what I like to call side saddle format, you've got these like long compartments here, right here with a separate access door. And notice how these doors flip themselves open. So it's, it's just very, very easy to uh, be able to get to any and all the cargo space in there. Um, the ladder is always on. It's always side mounted. So it's there when you need it, you know, but it's not occupying cargo space when you're not using the ladder, which is handy. We have all LED tail and marker lights. This actually has reverse travel lights even. That's what that uh, top white beam light there is. It's not a third brake light. It's actually a reverse travel light. So when you shift into reverse, it will light up so that you can actually see what's going on behind you, whether it's a spotter or you had a, I don't know, rear view camera or anything like that. Um, let's see, we already talked about the garage. I talked about measurements. Pardon me as I just kind of think out loud as I go here. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything because good Lord, there's, there's so much to cover. And really guys, I'm doing just such a cursory gloss over on this. If I really went whole hog on a Fusion, it could easily be a couple hours. And my video's already long enough. I'm already long-winded enough. You're probably tired of hearing me talking already if you're anything like my wife or any of the salesmen here. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> my point is, I want to give you a good idea. You're no doubt going to have questions. You know, even when I think I've covered everything, someone still has a great question. I'm like, man, I should have talked about that. This is here to give you an idea. To get those ultra, ultra specifics that really apply to you personally, give our team a call. So again, both power awnings, LED lighting. This is what I've seen how you have this really private patio space back here. Tons of room 
for all your picnic-y table type stuff. But once again, we also have a really cool outside entertainment center over here. You've got some Sony uh, outside marine grade speakers with a uh, HD uh, TV inside for entertainment purposes. And most of the time, uh, like in Mr. Halet's uh, Montana, he's got a real similar arrangement. He'll just have whatever over-the-air channel happens to play on here. Maybe he'll get some local news. It'll It's mostly just white noise filler on the campsite, but it just kind of, I don't know, it just helps everything feel full, you know? And, every, and it's never empty, but you can always turn it off if you just prefer the peace and quiet, I suppose, too. We talked about the Morite Subs. Guys, I think, we're, I think we're just about there. I think we pretty much nailed it. Um, if you have any questions, give us a call here. We are, you know, very eager to meet you folks. We're eager to see another one of these things go down the road. And uh, again, w whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything between, except for hidden dealer fees, we don't do those. We do everything else, though, here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.